Okay, here we are. It's day one of chapter seven. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about chapter seven is all about correlation and scatter plots. And, and what we want to do is we want to talk about what is a correlation and, and what does it mean and what does it tell us. We're going to do this through baseball. Sports are fabulous for statistics because, you know what, sports really is all about statistics. But we're going to start with baseball. And what we have here is from the year 2007. Yes, I know it's outdated. Yes, I don't care. From the year 2007, I have baseball team opening day salaries and the number of wins they had that year. And we're going to make a comparison. Now, why are we going to make this comparison? The reason that we're going to make this comparison is because there is this kind of controversy in baseball, and that is that baseball is one of the few sports that does not have a salary cap. And without a salary cap, the philosophy is that if you have more money to spend, you can buy the better free agents. And if you can buy the better free agents, therefore, you should have more wins and have a better chance at winning championships. And if you don't have the money to spend, then you can't afford the top price free agents, and you're kind of stuck with what you've built up through your farm system. But you can't necessarily get the best players at their prime. What we have here is the salaries and there, there's some big salaries here. We're starting with the New York Yankees who opening day salary was $189 million and uh, a whole lot of money after that but we'll just call it loose change. And the number of wins they had was 94 which is second most in Major League Baseball. Second highest salary is $143 million and that's the Boston Red Sox and you might not be able to see these numbers right here. This will be posted on the wiki excuse me, they had 96 wins, most wins in Major League Baseball. Matter of fact, they were tied for the most wins in Major League Baseball with the Cleveland Indians, which are down here. Here's the Cleveland Indians, 61 million, and they had 96 wins that year. They had the most wins in Major League Baseball. But we've got some differentiation in salary here. The drop between the top team and the second top team, between 189 million and 43 million dollars, there's, there's a $46 million difference. That's, that's a big chunk of money. So there's a whole bunch of, of salaries here. But what's interesting is let's go to the other direction. Let's go down to the lowest paying team. The lowest paying team at that year was the Tampa Bay Devils. They had a team salary of $24 million. And their number of wins was 66. Lowest number of wins, lowest salary in Major League Baseball. Then came the Florida Marlins at $30 million, $6 million more. They had 71 wins. Here's my favorite team, my favorite team forever and ever and ever, Pittsburgh Pirates, $38 million. They've always been a, a low-paying team. They consider themselves to be a small market team. They are. They don't have the market that some of the big cities have. And they had 68 wins, which was the second lowest number of wins in Major League Baseball. And, and what does this tell us? The Pirates sucked. Yes, they did. That's fine. We're kind of used to it as Pirates fans. So the question here is, and by the way, the Devil Rays don't suck anymore. They're, they've turned that around. I don't know what their salary is right now, but, but their wins have been pretty good. Okay. So the question is, is there a relationship between the amount of money that a team spends and the number of wins that they have? And in order to look for that relationship, we'll create a scatter plot. And, and our thought here is because we've done correlation before in an Algebra 2 environment, is that if there is a relationship, it should take on a, a linear shape. And that's what this chapter is about. It's about linear correlation, which means we're talking about lines. We're not talking about quadratic equations. We're not talking about logarithmic equations. We're talking about linear correlation. So is there a relationship between these two? And as we talk about that, we also need to decide which one of these is going to be the explanatory or the independent variable and which one is going to be the response or the dependent variable. And since the salary is set at the beginning of the year, that's the one I'm going to go with. I'm going to say that salary is going to predict or influence the number of wins that you have. So I'm going to create a graph here and we'll just make this just a smidgey bigger and we're going to take salary and we'll bring it down here to the x-axis because that's my explanatory or independent variable and wait for the sound effect. Here it comes. Uh, boop! And now we're going to bring the winds over to the y-axis and we're going to see what happens and bang we have a scatter plot. And the question is 
do we have a linear pattern here? And not exactly, but we don't not have a linear pattern here. If we think about it, here's the Yankees, highest salary, 189 million, and they're 94 wins. Here's the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, 24 million, 66 wins. Here's the Pirates. Guess what? They suck. And we start here, and are we moving in a linear direction? Well, yeah, we are. We're kind of starting here and moving up and to the right. So it does follow a linear pattern. Granted, it's not a real strong straight line, but it still does follow a linear pattern. So, so we're looking at that, and that's fine. That, that's good. Okay, so now... Here's the thing, we've got this relationship, we say, well, you know, it's kind of linear, but we're going to need to describe it. And when we describe a relationship, there are three things that we need to talk about. We need to talk about, just like when we describe a distribution, the three things we talk about describe a distribution, distribution are, we talk about shape, we talk about center, we talk about spread. When we talk about a relationship, the three things we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about form, which is also known as shape, we're going to talk about that direction, and we're going to talk about strength. Form or shape just means, is it linear or is it not linear? In this situation, yes, it's linear. And, and by linear, we're talking about, is it linear or is it curved or is it uh, a logarithmic or something like that? In this situation, we're going to say it's linear. Direction. What does direction mean? Well, let's take a look at how this graph is moving. This graph is moving up and to the right. So if we were talking about a line, we would say that this line has a positive slope. Correlation works the exact same way. It, if it's moving up and to the right, it's positive. If it's moving down and to the right, it would be negative, just like slope in algebra one. The, but that's not enough information. When you talk about direction, you also have to talk about the variables as well. So we would say it's positive, because there's two parts of this. It's positive. The second part about, of this is what is happening. And what's happening is here is as salary is increasing, wins are increasing. And it has to be in context, not as x increases, y increases, but it has to be using the variables as salary increases, y increases. So, so far we have it's linear. We have direction. We're going to say it's positive. And in order to get full credit for this, we're going to say as salary increases, wins increase. So that's the two things we need to talk about. The third thing we need to talk about is strength. How strong is this relation? Otherwise known as how linear is it? In order to talk about how linear it is, we need to talk about the correlation coefficient, which, which is the measure of strength. Of and the variable that we use to represent the correlation coefficient is the letter R. As I like to say, it's the pirate statistic, R. Uh, it's a bad joke. I know. I don't care. All right. So we're going to talk about the correlation coefficient. And in order to find the correlation coefficient, we're going to do a quick bit of, of summary statistics here. And this is going to allow me to do this. So I'm going to say that salary on the x-axis is going to predict wins on the y-axis. And we get a value of 0.49. Correlation is a value, and it's a decimal typically, but it's a value between negative 1 and positive 1. So it takes on any range in between there. Negative meaning the direction down to the right like slope. Positive meaning direction like slope up and to the right. So negative down and to the right, positive up and to the right. And this is 0.49. Four, nine. So that's halfway between 0 and 1. So what that's saying is, if we think about it strongly, it's, it's, it's like a moderately strong relationship here, or, or a moderate relationship, but it's definitely positive, so it's going up and to the right. And we're going to pause, and we're going to come back right after this break.